Welcome back to a new year of Season Chasers. I'm Rob Freeman. This is where we like to study and learn about the great outdoors. And for the next 30 minutes, we're going to share some of what we've learned with you. We've got some interesting outdoor stuff, and there's plenty of time for you to call a friend so you won't have to explain it to them later. Today on Season Chasers, we're going to show you what to do with a big catch of silver salmon. We're on the shore of Alaska's Cook Inlet, and we're smoking fish. You may remember our friendly fox named Slim Jim. This week, he takes being neighborly a few steps farther. Not all of our Alaska neighbors are quite so sociable. We'll let him come in close, but hopefully not too close. You've heard the news, so let's get down to the beach in Alaska for something really good to eat on Season Chasers. Well, we're making Alaska smoked silver salmon today. Fresh caught from the rivers. We're going to show you how to turn this you want to start with, uh, into that. All right, these are uh, silver salmon, and uh, they've been cleaned and flayed and stripped into about quarter inch, half inch strips, and then smoked with uh, either wood from the beach or alder wood for uh, seven to ten days. and. Uh, they're dehydrated, but they still have the, the good fish oil, the omega-3 fish oils. And, uh, these are kind of back pieces, and it's more like a belly piece. That When they really get done, they're just dripping with that, uh, that fish oil that, that we like best. And they don't need to be preserved. We just good uh, vacuum pack them and good trail food and our beer. They go good with beer. <laughs> <laughs> big like this and then they end up uh, shrinking down to like that so it's, it's concentrated so to speak and uh, preserved and flavored you know uh, they're cured with a mixture of salt and sugar and uh, finished with the brine sometimes like soy sauce and pepper lemon juice you know fancy some people use white wine but uh, they dry well on the beach, you know, if there's a good if there's a good breeze that really really helps. It's a little harder when it's rainier. And you need more more fire and smoke. Dexter. <laughs> Putting out a sharp knife and a fresh fish. Let's see how this goes. Other people can do it in one clean slice, but yeah, that's the start of a good fillet. There's not too much meat left on the bone. And it's uh, reasonably intact. a dozen of those from each side and then we hang them on strings and we go into the cure so 17. They go from kind of starting out at about this size. When they're more done, they end up closer to that size. So uh, mostly uh, it's a lot of dehydration, but it keeps the oils in. That's the part that we like.
lot of other good looking filet with minimum waste. We recycle this down to the beach, back where it came from. Pull it out of the inlet, take what we want, and give the rest back. So I'm sure professionals could do this in about three seconds. But it works. The salt helps cure it by drawing the moisture out and helps it to preserve it as it as it dries. John and Janelle hang the marinated strips to dry before we put them up in the smokehouse. It's really relaxing down here on the beach, even when you have a bunch of work to do. Cook Inlet is about 35 miles wide off this beach, and the snow-covered peaks on the Kenai Peninsula are over on the other side. You never know what you might see on this beach, so it's a good idea to guard the smokehouse. Now, here's some of what we have to show for a couple of good days' hard work. They're not near as heavy as they were. No! <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah, the heat helps dry it and then the smoke, of course, uh, flavors it and keeps, keeps the bugs off. This is our stainless steel flame arrester here. You don't want a big bonfire, you know, you want a, a small clear fire or a, an overnight smolder. When you guard the smokehouse, here's what we're guarding against. This fella showed up one day while we were checking the smoked fish. We figured he was about a 350 pounder. Plenty big enough to cause trouble but quite a bit smaller than one that might be 800 pounds and stand up to eight foot tall. We figured he was rummaging up the beach for some of John's recycling material and he had no idea that we were close by with the camera. At this point, Brown Bear is about 50 yards away and he still hasn't seen us. It's time to let him know that we're here and we really don't want to see him up any closer. Ah. Ah. Now he knows that people are nearby, and at least he quits coming ah. directly our way. He's not like the sleepy bears you might see at the zoo. He can ah. cover some ground quickly, and we want to keep some distance. No harm, no foul. Coming up next, another wild critter on the doorstep this time. Sometimes when taking wildlife videos, you gotta walk a long way and wait a long time for just that perfect situation. Well today, our favorite fox, Slim Jim, has invited himself over to the Alaska summer cabin. Slim Jim carefully checks out the surroundings before stopping in and collecting some snacks. It's taken about four summers to regularly get this close to this wild Alaska red fox. Since we don't have dogs at the cabin during the summer, Slim Jim gets all the treats. And sometimes he'll even do some doorstep tricks. When that old hamburger bun gets set aside. 
I suppose he just prefers meat and maybe later a few fresh marshmallows. It's not just every day that I catch a shot of a fox in the kitchen. I think he knows the good stuff lies somewhere behind that white door. We try not to spoil his dinner, saving the dessert until the last. Now this picture gives us a good look at those rows of sharp Slim Jim teeth. We're not going to get any closer than this. I try to make it clear with consistent hand signals that I'm presently out of treats. Nobody wants him sampling on a finger. Slim Jim will patiently wait while we hunt up some more treats. Now this picture is from later in August. See how the coat and tail are filling in for the winter? One of the finest places to hunt trophy white-tailed deer and wild turkey can be found on the Kansas-Missouri state line near Minden Mines, Missouri. Welcome to Brock Ranch and the exclusive Brock Paradise Lodges. Brock Ranch is a thousand private acres loaded with mature woods, beautiful strip pits, and managed open areas that are only grazed by the abundant wildlife. Brock Ranch is accepting a limited number of hunting groups for the Missouri archery and firearm deer seasons, and they offer spring turkey fishing combos. Brock Ranch can privately accommodate groups of four to eight hunters within walking distance of your hunting area. It's an excellent destination for your deer camp with all the privacy and luxury that made the Brock Ranch famous. So I put my camera down, I put my scope up, and he was just all of a sudden out of the rack. He was just huge. And uh, so I waited until he turned broadside to me, and I took a shot, and he went down like that, and I walked up to him, and it just, it took my breath away. It was the biggest deer I've ever taken, and so he was, he was an awesome deer. Well, his big brother will be around here next year, right? I, I'll be back next year for sure. Whether it's corporate entertainment, family groups, couples, some old hunting buddies, or a bunch of beginners, the Brock Ranch and Paradise Lodges is the place to get away from it all. For complete details, call 620-547-2500. Trophy white-tailed deer and wild turkey at Brock Ranch on the state line at Minden.